Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is uh, module 8.3 in Integrated Math 2 and uh, it's called Special Factors to Solving Quadratic Equations. Don't forget all your other uh, math lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. And so here's our question, how can we use special products to aid in solving quadratic uh, equations with factoring? All right, so remember, um, I don't know, about the two months ago, we would have asked you to FOIL out x plus y times x plus y, and you would have gotten x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And similarly, x minus y times x minus y is x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. And then x plus y times x minus y, the outers and inners would cancel out, and it would give us x squared minus y squared. Okay, and can you recognize that this right here is x plus y quantity squared, and this is x minus y quantity squared? So we would have actually given you x plus y squared and then, and then foil it out, and it would have given you this right here, and this is x minus y squared, okay? So, um, and then uh, these conjugates of each other, x plus y times x minus y, conjugates are binomials, the same binomial, one has a plus, one has a minus. It always gives you a difference of squares. So when we factor these, you guys remember factoring is asking you uh, what times what gave us this trinomial well it was x plus y squared and notice this is a perfect square this is a perfect square and there's three terms it's called a perfect square trinomial this just has to be double the product of what you were squaring here so uh, you got to just check x times y and then double it will be 2xy in the middle okay if that signs a minus then this is going to be x minus y squared so as long as they're a perfect square and that's a plus right there another perfect square this sign is the one that goes in the middle and then if we said factor this x squared minus y squared it's x plus y x minus y okay so let's go ahead and factor some of these here you guys so here I've got a perfect square trinomial. They can't GCF out, out of anything. I can pull a 3 out of these two guys, but not out of that. So this is a trinomial. That's 5x times 5x. That's 3 times 3. So this is a perfect square trinomial. It gives us a binomial squared. So when we have a perfect square trinomial where the book ends, these two guys are both perfect squares, it gives us a binomial squared. So this is going to be 5x plus 3 quantity squared. Squared. And then you just got to mentally check, you guys. Multiply 5x times 3 is 15x, and then double it. It has to be double because of that 2 right there. So double 15x is 30x. So, so that's it right there, okay? All right, how about this guy right here? Okay, first we can pull a 2 out. It looks like we can pull a 2a out of all of those. So when we do that, then we have a perfect square, a perfect square trinomial. So this guy's going to be a binomial squared. This sign goes in the middle. This is 3a times 3a. This is b times b. So this will be 3a minus b squared, the quantity squared, okay? So when it's a minus, you just put a minus inside, and you got perfect squares on both ends, and it's going to give us the binomial squared with a minus in the middle. And just mentally check. 3a times b is uh, 3ab, then double it is 6ab. So there it is right there. Don't forget your GCF guy right there. Okay, all right, this guy here, we can pull a 2x out. And when we pull a 2x out, then we're left with uh, a difference of two squares. Can you see this is x squared squared, and this is a 4w squared squared. Okay, so now we can use uh, the difference of squares gives us the conjugates x plus y, x minus y, except here it's going to be x squared plus 4w squared and then x squared minus 4w squared. Don't forget your GCF right there. Now the reason why I didn't put a box around that is because that's not factored completely. Here's another difference of squares. This is x times x. This is 2w times 2w. So this is going to be x plus 2w, x minus 2w. Okay? Alright, so when we factor that, there's the final answer right there. Now the sum of squares never factors, you guys, but a difference of squares you can keep going going down. So so this red guy factors came out of this guy right here. It's a difference of squares right there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and solve. So we're going to 
uh, still factor and use our zero product property. Okay, so perfect square trinomial. This is a binomial squared. 4x goes on this end, 5 goes on this end, so it's going to be the binomial squared. All right, we just got to double check, you guys. 4x times 5 is 20x, double it is 40x. Okay, and that sign right there goes in the middle. All right, so by our zero product property from um, the last lesson, uh, we set once we get it factored, then we set the factors equal to zero. Now you can do 4x minus 5 equals 0, 4x minus 5 equals 0 twice, but you're going to get the same answer. So we're going to add 5 to both sides and divide by 4. You get 5 fourths, okay? All right, so here we can pull a 5x squared out of all of those. And when we pull a, a 5x squared out, then we have another perfect squared trinomial. This is a binomial squared, x times x, 1 times 1, so it's x plus 1 squared. Okay, now we set the factors equal to 0, 5x squared equal to 0, and then x plus 1 equal to 0, okay? All right, and then so there we go. We get x equals 0 or x equals negative 1 right there, okay? All right, try this one, okay? So pull the 2 out, and then we get a difference of squares. All right, so this is x plus 9, x minus 9 right there. Now, when you're solving equations, you can actually get rid of the 2 because you're dividing both sides by 2. Or you can do like I did in this lesson right here and set the 2 equal to 0, and 2 doesn't equal 0. And then so here we get x equals negative 9. Here we get x equals positive 9. You can write plus or minus 9 if you want. 2 doesn't equal 0 right there. That's why I crossed it off. Okay. All right. So here, this one doesn't equal 0. we got to make it equal to 0. So let's add 16x squared to both sides. And then we'll GCF out an x squared. And then that's a difference of squares. This is 2x times 2x. This is 3 times 3. So it becomes 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3, and then set all those factors equal to 0. Okay, so here we get x equals 0. Here we subtract 3. Here we add 3 and then divide by by 2, and we get plus or minus 3 halves. Don't forget your x equals 0 right there, okay? All right, let's try an application problem. So a volleyball player sets the ball in the air, uh, and the height of the ball after t seconds is given by this formula. Remember the last one right here. This negative 16 means it's in feet per second, so we're dealing with feet per second here. If it's in meters per second, I forget what the number is. I think it's like negative 3.2. I forget. Anyway, so... So feet per second is the negative 16t. This is the velocity, so it's going, uh, the velocity is 12 feet per second. And this is the initial height where it starts out. So the volleyball standing with the ball at six feet in the air. And then she tosses it up and then spikes the ball, okay? So the ball gets tossed up and then goes and gets spiked down, okay? Don't forget the sound effect. <laughs> A teammate wants to wait until the ball is eight feet in the air before she spikes it. So when should the teammate spike the ball and how many reasonable solutions are there? Okay, well, okay. So we, so it's going to be, uh, she wants to spike it when the height is eight feet in the air. So we're going to set this equal to eight feet right there, okay? All right, so then we want it, so now we got a quadratic equation. We want it to equal zero, so let's subtract eight from both sides, okay? So six minus eight is negative two, and then we don't want this to be a negative quadratic. We want to be a positive, so we're going to divide it by negative one, but all of these are even numbers. Look better yet, let's divide everything by negative two, okay? So we're taking, not only uh, dividing it by two, but we're changing the signs, okay? So this becomes eight T, switch the signs, it becomes a minus six. 6t, and then divide this by 2 and change the sign plus 1. And then we factor this, you guys. So I did this all in one step right here. So you can see I did it over here. But here it is factored right there. And I factored it over here. Okay, so we get uh, uh, 4t minus 1 times 2t minus 1. So now we can set these factors equal to 0. So we get... Um, Add 1 to both sides and divide by 4, divide by 2, and we get t equals 1 fourth or t equals 1 half. And let's answer the question. It says, uh, when should the teammates spike the ball? Okay, so, uh, and how many reasonable solutions are there? Well, okay, so at uh, t equals uh, 0.25 seconds from the 1 fourth is 0 0.25 uh, or 0 0.5. Whoops, I made a mistake. Or 0.5. 
seconds uh, for the one half right there. So here's 0.25, here's 0.5 right there. Okay, and there's two solutions because um, uh, both occur after uh, the, the zero seconds. So she tosses it up and it comes back down. So there's two times that ball is going to be at height uh, eight to, uh, eight eight feet in the air. All right, you guys, I hope that makes sense. And there's uh, your assignment if you are in our class. Take care.